Hi Freelancer! Welcome to today's episode of the Freelance Blueprint, the podcast for all your freelance questions. I'm your host Lizzie, a UX designer, a digital nomad and a freelancer myself. And in this podcast I'm interviewing fellow freelancers from all over the world so you can learn how to improve your business skills and see what freelancing is really like. My guests and I will be talking about the struggles, the successes and the lessons we learned along the way to help equip you on your own freelance journey. Today we're joined by Nate, a freelance AI creator and educator. He's been exploring AI tools for work and he's also teaching people how to use it to their full potential. We met in Chiang Mai about six months ago and I'm also happy to call him a friend. I'm really excited to talk to him today and find out more about his freelance journey. Hi Nate, thanks for joining today. Nice, thank you for the intro. Uh, <laughs> this was a very nice uh, introduction, I appreciate it. I'm very excited to answer some questions, have a conversation. Nice, nice. Cool, so um, please tell our listeners a little bit about yourself. Um, how did you get started? Yeah, I do a lot of things. I'm very curious by nature, so I touch a lot of different areas and activities. <laughs> and, and just in general, the core at my core, I would say I'm a creator. I love to make stuff and specifically stories. I love to tell stories because I think they are a form of communication, which is extremely powerful. So more or less, I started my journey, I guess, First of all, I would like to say I was never like formally employed anywhere. More or less, I went to college. I was studying Japanese studies. And then I thought, what am I going to do with this? <laughs> More like I started to reflect, what am I going to do? Where is this going if I study this? And I thought, yeah, this is not really something I'm interested in. I don't want to pursue this. So I just started doing stuff. Mm -hmm. So I started making videos on Instagram and then I made a Kickstarter and then I was started video editing and doing some motion graphic animations and then I did some marketing campaigns and now I am helping people or like teaching people how to use AI in their creative work mostly so creative professionals how they can use AI in their work so yeah it's kind of feels like it's all over the place um, but I feel like that's also kind of freelance mentality where you are all over the place because you have to manage all of the things but yeah, I would say at the core, creating and storytelling and education. I like to teach how other people can do the same thing. Yeah. Nice, nice, cool. Yeah. And what was it for you? Like you said, you've never been in a firm job. Mm. Like, was there something where you're like, I'm not gonna apply? Or did you always did you always know you wanted to do your own thing? It was more like, I come from a very small town, like 9,000 people, something like that. And growing up there, <laughs> I could quickly recognize the pattern people have of like, okay, they get they go to their job, eight hours, they go back home, and on the way they like stop in a bar or something just so they you know forget <laughs> they have to go again tomorrow, and I was like, this I cannot do this. Like I immediately saw I cannot do this for the rest of my life, so I was like, yeah, there has to be something different. There have to be something else. So when I was in college, when I was still studying, I already started thinking like, okay, like internet is here and it is absolutely incredible like it gives you access to so many people to so many projects to just anything you can find literally um so yeah i just started applying at that point uh, on upwork i think um i don't know how old i was it was like i guess nine years ago now maybe eight something like that mm -hmm. um and i started just like because i was studying japanese i was like yeah i can start translating stuff so more or less like i always i like to do stuff i i'm not much of a I'm very empirical in my learning, so I don't spend a lot of time doing theory. I like to jump in and just see, okay, how does this work? Can I do this? Can I not do this? So I just started like translating some Japanese documents <laughs> <laughs> and I translated a few mangas and I translated some other documents and manuals and stuff like that. And yeah, this was also a time when I was like, ah, oh, this, I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. Just like translating stuff and like reading text and stuff like that. It is not, it didn't like fulfill me. So I just pivoted more into, or more like in this period, I was also already making like videos for Instagram. It was like very specific niche called cardistry, which is like creative card shuffling, I guess. And I got like a lot of traction. I built like a community, I built a following, I built a brand. So then I was like, oh yeah, let's make a Kickstarter. I want my own deck of playing cards. So I did that and more or less, and that went super well. So I got confirmation, oh yeah, like I can just make money by myself by having an idea and doing it so i do think like freelancing is kind of for me at least it is 
kind of like an overlap between um, being a business owner, an entrepreneur, and an employee. I feel like you cover all of these three areas at some point. Like you are a business owner, you need to do taxes, you need to have a strategy, you need to have a plan of how you're gonna sustain your life. And you need to be an entrepreneur of like having ideas and selling them to people because basically you're offering your skills to people and you have to have like, they need to be willing to buy it, I guess, at least for, from my experience. And the third one was employee, I guess because you have to do the work <laughs> yeah. you have to literally sit down and do the work yeah but i think like a lot of people don't realize with freelancing that it doesn't matter how good you are with this one skill there's you have to market yourself mm -hmm. you have to like uh, do your finances yeah like you have so many hats that people don't understand that it's you it's not enough to just be a good designer or be good at that one skill that you're offering you have to do everything else but the um thing that i find interesting is like um how did you find your gigs like i know where you're from but can you tell the listeners where you're from you said you're from a small town yeah. so um where exactly are you from yeah i'm from slovenia which is neighbor of austria where you are from so you are here in Chiang Mai in thailand you are the closest person <laughs> to like a home environment i feel like yeah. um yeah from a very small town called slovengrad it's it's like nine thousand people and I lived there until like high school. Then I moved to the capital, Ljubljana, which has like around 300,000 people. And I lived there during like my college. And I didn't finish it. Like at the end of the second year, I was already like, yeah, I'm out, <laughs> more or less. And I just started doing stuff. Um, How did so you um, get your. So, like when you said you did the translation, yeah. um, because like Japanese and Slovenian, I don't know how common it is. Like what? It was like, English. Oh, it was English. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. So, how is it like? How did you find your clients? Did you just start to translate uh, mangas as a hobby, or did someone pay you to do that? How did how did the ball start so rolling? Out? Something that I think is a very nice hack, or something that I found out for myself is that I like to offer people something I can do, and then I will learn from them i will take something from them and ideally they will pay me in this process <laughs> so that has been my approach for a lot of time that um, i look for people that are looking for something that i can offer that have a skill that i can fulfill their requirements and they have something that i want um, and when i started out i feel like it's the same for everyone you just like apply everywhere like yeah. you just reach out to anyone you think would have something for you and with japanese in slovenia not a lot of people and that's why i was already like yeah digital yeah. <laughs> i'm all in on digital this is this is the other side of working in my opinion of like not being in a physical environment so yeah i w just went to upwork i made a profile i sent a lot of proposals out i sent a lot of cover letters out and yeah some people were like also at that time like it was for me more important to get something so the rate i was willing to just go lower i feel like anything i got was already good i i was like nice cool i it's moving somewhere i get like validation confirmation that what i'm doing is valuable that it's working that people want it so it was more like a test and trial to see if there's a demand and if there is a demand like it was more about getting the job initially rather than getting the money for it and then build on that uh, experience yeah yeah i would say i would say for me like it's all about building skills like you said like being a freelancer you gotta do a lot like you do a lot and that's why for me i think it's very well suited because i'm all over the place with my work as well and you really develop a mentality of like okay i have to do this 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 you develop a lot of different skills and you have everything kind of under control you are your own boss which is both like a curse and a blessing but when you like learn how to convert the curse into a blessing it's like beautiful <laughs> so for me it was like actually like at the start of this year i got into an employment contract and was this your first ever employment yeah more or less mm -hmm. and even this started like the conversation we had with the person was more like okay i will offer you these services and you will pay me it, it felt like more okay this is still a contract of freelance you know i'm uh, independently outside mm -hmm. but then when he sent the contract it was like employment i was like thinking ah this is not exactly what we talked about but okay i, I, I accept <laughs> you know and i for like the first week or two i seriously struggled because i i have like the habit of okay i need to see everything i need to understand everything that's going on because then i can find the best course of action of how, how i can contribute my skills um so yeah it was a bit difficult to change my mind of like okay i don't have to care about everything i can just literally do my work but yeah like that is over now and i'm 
happy. It was an experience. I'm much more happy having control over everything <laughs> and doing a freelance kind of contract. How do you feel like managing everything? Because like like for me personally, it can get overwhelming. Like okay. I'm like you know, I'm trying to build an online presence, but it's like this whole marketing Instagram thing is like a job on its own, um, and it's difficult then to like do the actual work, but then also like keep track of finances. Is there something like how do you manage that without getting overwhelmed while still being in control of everything? Oh yeah, overwhelm is 100% a part of it. <laughs> I feel like every freelancer will be overwhelmed at least at the start, if not later on as well. Um, for me, I think it's a lot about motivation. Why are you doing the things you're doing? Um, that will give you tasks priority it will give you like okay i focus more time on this i focus more time on that also outsourcing like when you have this priority list you're like okay i don't i don't want to be expert at accounting <laughs> let's move it out yeah. <laughs> you know so i do th and that is a thing that i even now sometimes i struggle with of like investing in this because you are investing in yourself and that can be like you know um a lot of people have like low self-esteem or like doubts and insecurities it can be difficult to invest in yourself and be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna invest like a hundred dollars and you know, hire someone to do this for me, like uh, a design for me, you know, so I don't have to. Will I will I return that? Will I make a return on the investment? Yeah, you will. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you will. I absolutely will. So you know, it's it's good to believe in yourself, and and I do think I developed that from like an early stage where I was just like, yeah, I'm gonna do this. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Like if. Even when I was like doing the Kickstarter, I did not have support like from the family who would ideally be the one at least to support you, if not other people. Mm -hmm. It was not like, oh yeah, you should do this, you know, you're gonna make it. I was like, yeah, this is what are you doing, something like that. But I'm like, yeah, I don't care. Like, I believe this is something I want to do, and I also believe it's gonna work, and it did work. Mm -hmm. But also like, if it doesn't work. Yeah, it's hard if it doesn't work, like the failure and rejection is hard, but also you develop new skills. So yeah. you, the next one you got will be, you know. Yeah, I find it quite experience. remarkable that you come from like this small town and everyone lives the same life and you're like, I don't want this life. Like that, I think there are several people that might feel like they don't want this life, but they end up in this treadmill and they just keep going and in, in, they're in this hamster wheel because they don't know anything else. I also met another woman from Romania and she was she was talking pretty much about the same thing. It's a small town. Everyone works for the same company, and then they go home, and it's every day is the same. Nobody in her environment was a freelancer. Nobody in her environment like traveled further than the neighboring countries, and she was like one of the first. So it's it's quite admiring that there is like no, I want to do more, and like having this like excitement. But also the other thing you mentioned with like. The Kickstarter, for example, like not having that support. And I know we come from, like, we're from Europe, so we're quite privileged. And mm -hmm. like, we can always fall back that if something doesn't happen, we can move back to the parents. Like, mm -hmm. we have like this this pillow. Um, but like, how comfortable are you to talk about finances? Because I know for some people, it's a bit like, eh. No, extremely. I like to talk about everything. I think information and knowledge should be yes. free yeah. for everyone to access as much as possible. I have benefited a lot from other people sharing their lives, their experience, and I feel like <laughs> that is amazing. Like I would not be where I am if, specifically on internet, if people did not share like their experience yeah. openly like, of what they're doing. So absolutely, like anything goes. Cool, because this is exactly what I want to do th yeah. this podcast, because I had no idea that I could do the exact same thing that I would do on a perm job, on a freelance basis, and make three, four times that money. Mm. Like when I got my first gig, and actually my sister was here last weekend, and she was like, Oh, I mean, it's just so nice to see you thrive like this because I told her I just got this new client, but it's a startup that didn't get funding. So like they pay me a certain amount at the beginning and the rest in like 120 days and blah, blah, blah. And she was like, you know, like, even though like they just pay you that certain amount at the beginning, it's still like you now make in one week what you used to do in one month. Mm. like 10 years ago. Nice. Like I was in this furniture so store good. where, yeah, like I, I earned like 1,025 euros after tax and everything. And I mean, yes, it's 10 years ago, so the word like rent yeah. is different, etc. But like, it's like mad to think of it. And it's also nice to be reminded where you actually came from and why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah. Um, and I recently talked to another freelancer who's also going to be on this podcast, nice. Sonia. Um, and she's also like happy to talk about finances. And I think like, I wonder because like 
if I talk to freelancers, they're quite open to like, yeah, I, I can tell you the rate. I don't want to say officially because maybe with clients it can be a bit weird, but I'm happy to tell other freelancers how much I'm making. And I feel the same because it's like, I don't want them to like undersell their work, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so what financial tips do you have for someone who's starting out? Like you mentioned the investing in yourself part. And I, I highly, highly think people should do that, especially investing in an accountant so you don't oh, have yeah. to like deal with that stuff. So what's the financial recommendations you would have? So I am not great at finances. Um, a few things maybe to break it down. Um, I am not, I have never been like strongly motivated by money. For me, it was more or less about enjoyment of creating. I just wanted to make cool stuff. And if I get money that will compensate me for that and just allow me to live, excellent. That's like, I'm good, you know? Mm -hmm. But I did get like more into money greed i guess or just like money um, mentality recently or like the last year since i've moved here basically mm -hmm. and it, coincidentally also a lot of people have told me that i'm thriving since i'm here and i feel yeah because i'm in an environment that allows that has room for people like me or for you for freelancers for digital nomads for whoever you are you know it is room for you so you have like the the air to breathe and also like the community to you know chat and push yourself up and if you are by yourself, it can be very difficult uh, because, first of all, you got to do a lot and you don't know how to do any of it. So how are you going to do all of it by yourself? So it can be very difficult. And also, it's a lot of work. I yeah. also want to point out that it is a lot of work, like starting out and building all of this, like even mentally and then like s strategically, it's a lot of work. But like now, like you said, you are where you like earn per week what you did before in a month well worth it i feel like <laughs> you know it really pays off and then you're like in a position where money just doesn't matter when you could literally like go anywhere i think it's a lot about freedom as well yes. that like you achieve so much freedom by being a freelancer um first of all just the freedom of your time that you decide when you are going to work and when you're not going to work to, to choose who you're going to work for maybe not always but most of these you have control over and also location and also financial, like you have a lot of freedoms. And I think that's what a lot of people want in their life, just freedom to live however they want. What was the question? I forgot, <laughs> my bad. Uh, what was the, oh, the um, uh, financial advice. Yeah, you okay. I would say definitely an accountant. That That is a big one. Uh, I did have one um, in Slovenia. I still have one in Slovenia. <laughs> <laughs> and it's such a load off. Uh, your your workload like taxes and finances are for me not naturally interesting or intuitive so I don't want to learn I don't want to I mean I like to have understanding of how it works but I don't want to know how to do it uh, I'm not that interested in it. and I would say yeah when you start off it's okay to maybe undersell yourself like when you really really start off when you're like at zero when you have nothing yet when you're just like you know maybe finishing school or not even finished school you know and you're thinking oh i want to do something um i think it's okay if to get i think it's better to get something and have like use cases have references have the testimonials rather than start pricing yourself high so i do think like okay it's okay to like undersell yourself a bit maybe even do like a free project or something if you really feel like it will benefit your skills, it, it will benefit your portfolio, it will benefit your testimonials, basically. But then I think it start to recognize your value. Like really, um, every time I start something new, for example, two years ago, I started doing marketing, content marketing specifically. And I was like, oh yeah, I don't, uh, I don't know a lot about this. Um, like I'm just starting out, like how can I do this? And then I just like sat on for a while and I thought back on what I've did, I, what I've done so far and I was like, Oh, I actually have done a lot in this direction. Like I have done the whole uh, Kickstarter campaign, which was based on content. Like I produced so much content and specifically video content. So it's like, oh, I already did it back then. I just didn't know what I'm doing. You know, I just like did it out of um, self-interest. Um, so I do think it's good to like sit down, check back on like what you have done and maybe even like disassociate, like look as a third person, maybe, you know, put the third person and say, okay, like, they did this, you know, and you will see, oh, that's a lot of value. So at that point, I feel like 
don't move yeah. <laughs> like don't move like state your value and don't move yeah. <laughs> you know just be be confident and strong in your opinion and your value yeah, yeah. i agree because like especially like i'm coming from a ux perspective which mm. is very different to what you're doing like not that crazy different but still quite different and there's so many boot camps there's so many like like there's so many people who start to like want to get the first gig and they really struggle and i don't like offering free work because i don't think it's fair like you have to be quite privileged to be able to take on free work mm. so if you have to like feed a family already like it's it's tough but i also understand that a lot of recruiters don't want to hire someone out of a boot camp because they don't know if they're actually good um but yeah like maybe one or two gigs or maybe for low money but yeah it should not be more than that because like you're, you're giving away free work you invest in yourself to learn all of those skills and you should be like you should get something for it if you're providing good work so like it's about like th th i think it's not about like um that i worry about the people that do too much free work it's more that i dislike when companies that could afford to pay someone oh, yeah. don't pay them because mm -hmm. it's like oh you're just a junior they're still doing something that you don't have to do you know yeah i yeah. think the only time you should like accept free work is when you see it as an investment in yourself yes so like instead of like saying oh i will buy a course for a hundred dollars you will say okay i will do this work for i don't know one week or something like that and you will learn the same skills as, as you would would if you took a course for example yeah so only then like if you see there will be value for you in developing skills and getting knowledge then i would consider um like free work or even of like a connection and network if you feel like being around these people will open doors to other people. I think that's also extremely valuable. Yeah. There was something else you said that I wanted to get into. I also had a lot of thoughts. Yeah. Um, what was that? Investing in yourself, working for less. Um, there was something, but I lost my train of thought. Yeah, as did I. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot of thoughts in general. Um, all over the place like i said i feel like it takes a special uh, or a specific mindset to do freelancing that you you don't just follow you live i feel like that is with life in general like if you want to live you got to do stuff mm -hmm. otherwise if you don't do stuff you're gonna die you know and it's the same with work like if you're just gonna you know repeat the same thing if you're not gonna do stuff you're gonna die and i saw that like with people in my environment walking dead more or less in my opinion or like in my eyes at that point you know but like for work as well it's like you want to live you got to do stuff and yeah. i think it's worth it but i also think with freelancing it's like it's not for everyone mm, um sure. it's like people want that safety like i always say safety because it's not really safe like yeah. being in a firm job like you the, all the layoffs and stuff but like um like i feel like freelancing gives you more safety because like you say you're in control, you're in control yeah um, and you're never gonna kick yourself out and like you say you're your own boss but you're also your own employer yeah. so it's kind of like sounds a bit schizophrenic but like there's so many roles like you have like you let yourself down if you don't do this task which is also a lot of pressure <laughs> yes <laughs> so I think you also develop a lot of like personally you develop a lot when you go through all of these mental yes. exercises of, oh my god like it's on me like I'm, I, it's everything is on me I can be difficult um, but for example this stability in this like employment contract i had for like the three months i have never felt more stressed and out of control <laughs> with this experience and that's why i'm happy that like i i i like closed that that like we uh, i quit that because i was like yeah this is not like i can i do not want to be in a position where somebody else is has control or power there will always be people uh, who will have more power or, or control than me, but I want to have as much control and power and freedom over my life as possible. And freelancing is a lot of that. So giving that up now that I know how it feels like and looks like, it's extremely difficult. Yeah. I think it's very much a mindset thing as well, which comes back to what you said about investing in yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, do you feel like, oh, it's worth investing in this, hiring someone to do that, uh, or like booking the course, or like booking a mentor and things like that? Like, I only booked a business coach like three, four months ago. Mm -hmm. And like, since then, I started a newsletter. I had my first webinar. Nice. I'm starting this podcast. Yeah. And I think it's a lot of a mindset thing because it's like, 
I would not have thought that I'd be able to do this. And I also feel like I'm overwhelming myself with it. But also my coach is like, no, no, you can do that. It's fine. Like just do small things at a time and it's not going to be perfect. And I think like with freelancing, it's like, like, for example, it's 1 p.m. now. We're mm -hmm. in Chiang Mai. Mm -hmm. Neither of us are, f yes, my mom is from here, but like other than that, like it, we could be in any nice yeah. tropical country, you know. But it's really nice here. We have the f <laughs> yeah, it's super nice here. We have the freedom to be wherever. We mm. can do this in the middle of the day because we chose a time zone. Like I'm still working with European clients. I think your time is like still is flexible. It's not really tied to a time zone. Yeah, um, I keep a very flexible time. Like this was probably the biggest a requirement for me when, <laughs> when I started working was I want to control my time <laughs> because waking up is not always easy for me and I experienced that I did have student jobs so like I had to wake up at like 7 or something like that and I was like yeah. I'm dying yeah. <laughs> I'm dying I was like I can't do this and I was like I need control over my time so this was a very nice option or more like it was immediately uh, evident to me that yes uh, this is wonderful and I love it nice also uh, something I wanted to say is that we were talking about valuing yourself I th and investing I think it goes towards both of these I think that the sooner you set your value the sooner you will attract people for yes. the, for that price you know so if you if you like go, let's say you go gradually, you start at zero, you go up to a hundred or something like that, you know, the longer you stay like in the twenties, you know, you're not going to be moving as quickly. So I feel like there needs to be a clear progression just because something is comfortable and is giving you like a good amount of money, for example, let's say you get $25 per hour or whatever. Um, if you're like, oh, that is good. That's already a lot, you know, like I didn't think I would get this much or something like that. You get you can get more yeah. <laughs> you can absolutely get more you just gotta say it yeah so more or less it's a lot about you set the rules yeah. it's not about like oh the employer will tell me how much i'm worth no you you decide how much you're worth and like the sooner you start communicating it that way the sooner you'll attract people who are in the same environment so you will start building people like an environment and network of people who see the same value as you see is for like investing in yourself like before and I have this difficulty as well. Like I feel like I've made a big like, like this this month I did a lot of mental work on this as well. Like investing as much as I as much as possible into my business and my just like my work, um, because I've always kind of shied away. Of like oh, I I don't need it. Like it's okay. I can figure it out later. Um, but like the sooner that you put money in, the sooner you'll see how much it returns. And even if it doesn't, it's an experiment. That's yeah. also a thing. Like. You run experiments sometimes. Sometimes things don't work. <laughs> and that's okay because, you know, it's not the only thing. You have a lot of other options and opportunities. I mean, it is an investment. Like, you don't know if this, like, if it's like with shares, you don't know if it's going to go up or down. It doesn't have to be as extreme as, like, Bitcoin. But if mm. it's, like, properties, like, they always go up and down, you know? So it's, like, sooner or later you'll start to get an understanding of what it's, it's worth investing in and also how much you're investing in yourself. Like before, I remember the very first online course I bought was like a 10 euro Udemy course, you know? Did I finish it? Yes, but is it really like, did I learn much from it? Like It, it is useful, but I, I wasn't like mad. And now I spent like shitloads. And I don't actually want to mention. Oh, okay. How I, well, it's a, I, I spent like um, two and a half grand, US yeah. dollars. Yeah. Um, in a course yeah. that teaches you how to create your own course. Oh yeah. Because like my it. main goal is like make passive. It's a lot of money. Yeah. And I was also like, this is so much money. But also, it's like I can expense it for my business, so I get some tax. Like I, I have to pay less company tax based on that. But also, it's like, no, I am like yes, I'm me as a person, but I'm also running my business. And if I invested in myself, I still haven't launched a course, but I learned a lot from it. I learned about investing in yourself. I learned about the dip. That's the, that's actually, I remember now, that's the thing that I wanted to yeah. uh, talk about before. Like they talk about the dip, which is like this linear curve that things will not go in a straight line. There yeah. will be ups and downs yeah. and there will eventually be something where you feel like, I want to give up. This is not for me. This is not going to work out. Many times. That's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. when you're in the dip. And a lot of people give up then because it feels hopeless. They've pitched so many people. They've done this, this, that. But after you endure that and it's going to happen you will end up in that dip 
but if you stick through it it will massively go up mm. so like pushing through that and like every single time I'm in a phase I'm like oh shit I had no sign ups for this or like oh this didn't happen it's like I'm in a dip it's okay and like now I'm thinking just this mindset shift alone might have been worth the two and a half grand I invested in that course I mean I will eventually still do that course but like if you would have asked me two years ago would I have spent two and a half grand on the course I would have been like what the fuck like is Beyonce teaching that yeah <laughs> <laughs> but like it, 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 like and now it's like oh yeah my coach as well she's not the cheapest but she's worth her money like yeah. like who knows where this podcast is gonna go maybe it's gonna be two episodes and that's it maybe it's gonna be like several series who knows but it's interesting where freelancing is uh, taking you and I just remember the other thing I wanted to say what do you mention about like the hourly rate oh maybe you think 25 is a lot um, you can always go higher there is no cap with freelancing uh. Because yes, you can swap your time for um, work if you do like, uh, like yeah, for your time for money. Um, if you do like a certain skill, like for me, for example, the UX design stuff. But you can also um, have like certain retainers or like offer digital projects, uh, like what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And you invest a little bit, but you keep earning from it, you know? So there is no cap. If you're employed somewhere, there's a certain salary. Even if you're the president of the United States, there's only a certain amount of salary that you can get. You will not get a pay increase all the time. So yeah, yeah. you're in the system, but yeah. here you create a system exactly. which does not have a cap. And yeah, mm, I was thinking about the the dip and like the ups. It's always like that, even life. It's a fact. You sometimes you're down, sometimes you're up. And I just like yesterday was a very big up for me nice. <laughs> so i was like oh such a good day uh i was because i invested in myself all of all because oh, i invested in myself what, what, what happened? i just bought a subscription to a newsletter platform mm -hmm. so more or less like i automated a lot of things so it's more or less, more or less like growing a bit so i automated a lot of things so it just like sends out mails mm -hmm. automatically to uh, on a trigger and there is like some promotional programs and more or less like this specifically, I can give this example. The subscription per month is $99, $100. hundred. let us say it's $100, which might be a lot, maybe not. I think it's like, depends on people. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I also think once you start freelancing, $100, it doesn't sound a lot anymore. Mm. Yeah. So so I I did the $100 and they have like a refer referral program, which basically allows you to pay for subscribers. You Are know? you trying to sell me that one now? <laughs> um, it's not like that. <laughs> it's it's not the way. It's a promotional program, okay. basically. So people who are on that platform, but it's a great platform. It's called Beehive. Mm, mm -hmm. But um, people who are on that platform, you can they like put their price on, and if you promote them, and for every subscriber you get money, the, oh. the price they they set. So it's basically pay per subscriber, you know. But it's like the the subscribers are checked, so they are engaging. So it's not just like inflating numbers, you know, because then you would just like yeah. <laughs> create mails and that's it. So. I did that yesterday and I applied for a few of these promotions and like people accepted it, wanted me to promote them. And today I made $26 Nice. in one day and I invested a hundred dollars. So basically in a month, yeah, I would probably make more than a hundred dollars, which would already return the investment. So I was like, God, so good. Yeah. <laughs> so good. But more than that, it was, I've, I've got like validation for work, which is an excellent feeling with freelancing because you are by yourself and you don't always get like feedback from the environment. That's why it's also so important to surround yourself with people so they can give you feedback or coaches. Like coaches, I think are so good. Yeah. First of all, because you, it's easy to get overwhelmed and somebody is staying outside and just like taking a deep breath and like putting it in place and saying, oh, this is like this, you know, putting everything structuredly. Um, it's easier to kind of see the bigger picture yeah. and not get too too deep into the dip yeah. <laughs> i guess you know so it's really valuable to have people around you that can bounce things off you and like give you feedback so i was like i've been doing like my newsletter for um, half a year maybe a bit more yeah tell us about I the think, newsletter half a year because we haven't actually talked my... much about what you actually do so like no, i said yeah. in the introduction like you're an ai creator you educate people on it yeah so what exactly do you do and uh tell us about what you're talking about in your newsletter um my main focus is teaching people how to use AI in their creative work. So professional creators or 
creative professionals, however you phrase it. Um, AI is amazing. Um, it's going so fast. It's changing how we create, how we do things in everyday life. And I've been like since last year when it became like more available and viable. So it's been like a year now, probably maybe it's less like 10 months. I've just been like learning a new skill basically, which is again, like pure dancing. I just learned a new skill and I saw the opportunity of like, this is an incredibly valuable skill to have, <laughs> you know? So I have just started looking for ways to monetize the skill that I have, which is my approach often of like, this is what I said at the beginning of like having motivation of what you want to do and prioritizing tasks. So for me in the past, money was never like a high priority. It was like, okay, I have enough, I'm good. You know, I don't need to grow. I don't need to, you know, do a lot of things, that's it. Um, it was more about, I want to do things that are fun and I want to learn new skills. And so I built a lot of different skills and at the moment I can do a lot of things because of that, you know. And so my approach is now, oh, I have all of these skills now. Now, how do I monetize them? Like just where do I, where does money come into this? Like, can I sell something to someone? Can I sell a skill to someone? Can I sell my time to someone? Ideally, I would not sell my time. <laughs> Ideally, I would sell a digital product now because those are wonderful. So yeah, I just learned a new skill of how to make visuals with AI, how to tell stories with AI. Uh, everything is still more or less on storytelling. So I am growing my platform through a newsletter um, where I just weekly tell people, I give them a technique, a workflow, just a breakdown of something that is happening in the AI world. How can they make an image? How can they make a video? How can they make an animation? How can they make a voiceover? For example, today I have one scheduled, which is how can you add a voiceover to a video? And it is super simple. You literally ask ChatGPT to give you dialogue, put it into another platform, done. So it's really transforming how we are working. So yeah, um, this is my main focus of growing the platform where I teach people how to do this. And most of it I like to do through digital products. So I have like a lot of free ones, some are paid. Um, I have a video course which I made in December, I think which is not performing as well also because i'm not promoting it a lot i'm not like putting a lot of attention on it and i think that is also like back to the experiments i just like in november i said like, okay this is happening i'm doing it and i said like okay first digital product was like a pdf and it was like okay then i made like a video a course and it was like okay and then i like just followed how it's going you know and i saw that the video course is not like giving me the return on the time I spent. It took like quite some time to make it and I didn't get like the same amount back as I did with the digital product. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, okay, focus on that. And this is also something I wanted to say before. So it's nice to like wrap, everything wraps up in the end always. That follow like these metrics, like where does most of your money come from and invest more into that. Uh, so that's also, I think, makes investing easier. If you know that like, okay, my digital products are at the moment making, I don't know, $200 per month, and my video course is making, I don't know, $20 per month. Which one do I want to invest in? <laughs> I'm gonna go yeah. with 200, so it will become 400, 1,000, you know, yeah. whatever it will become. So, yeah. But also it could be that it's, like you said, that it's just because you didn't promote it enough. So maybe you mention it in your next newsletter, or like, it's the first time, like, I, I know mm. about your digital product, I know that the big one that you were working on, um, where there was some Canva issues, technical issues. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> I lost everything, a day of uh, work. Uh, did you finish it now? Yeah, I released it last okay. Tuesday, so it's been a week now. And again, this was an experiment. I feel like I approached this, um, I had some conflicting thoughts because on one hand, I want to grow this organically and naturally, just like at my own pace, basically. I want to grow it with my own um, passion and my own excitement. And on the other hand, I wanted to monetize it and I feel like no I, I, I want to separate this and I will monetize with my own excitement uh, I think that is the approach so for monetization what I are but already it's like monetizing well so, <laughs> so you know in the end I think um, yeah the excitement needs to be there for like something you're doing and then you're gonna be able to monetize however you want it um, but yeah like it was a week now um, it was an experiment um, I'm happy with the experiment I got like some sales I got new people on the newsletter. Nice. So overall, yeah, I think it was a very good experiment and more or less gives me even like more direction and confirmation of, okay, there are some people interested in it because we can talk about pricing here because I, we talked about that as well. I was struggling or more like just wasn't able to 
clearly decide on on a price. I remember <laughs> because because for me, like I said, information and knowledge should be free, and I feel like yeah, just have it, <laughs> you know. But on the other hand, I spend a lot of time on this, so I also want to do this as much as possible instead of other things. So you know, I gotta get some money in somehow. So I was thinking a lot about, oh yeah, how should I price it? And you were saying, yeah, I just go higher. And I was like, yeah, I could go higher. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Which is also great, you see, like having an environment when people tell you, yeah, just go higher. You know, otherwise I would go like very low. Yeah. And in the end, I like decided on like just 12 euros or something like that. Oh, really? Yeah, because I, I broke it down like two times. Okay. So instead of like having one big product, I decided on a small one and then an even smaller one. Yeah. So it's literally just like chapters. But I will release like multiple chapters and then like, you know, different. Um, One whole package. Yeah. So basically this uh, product that I have now is for 2D artists. So 2D artists guides to AI supported workflows. And this first chapter is on like concept stage. So how can you make images from nothing to what you have in mind with AI, with a lot of AI. And it's, I think it's incredible. Like I've been doing it for a while. I've had like a few clients where I was just like, made them images mm -hmm. and I was like yep easy money <laughs> but it's so interesting because like for me something like that if it helps other people make money with AI or like improve their mm. skills like $12 is like no investment at all yeah if someone really struggles to think is this worth me putting $12 in to learn from it it's like Nate you're not ready to to invest exactly. like you to have your own business because you will like, like for example, the money that now goes in and out of my account, like I have a subcontractor, so mm. I'm paying a full lot of the person's money as well. Mm. So it's like, you can't be stingy about $12. So for me, I'm like, I charge more, charge more. But it's like, what do you think yourself, it, like what do you think you are worth? And that's why mm. I think the, mon the mindset and like the whole like money charging things, it's so interesting because I remember when I talked to my coach and I was like, I love, telling people like not telling them what to do but like talking to people seeing their potential yeah and they're often like oh i would like to do this it's like you have everything you need for that like mo for example you met mo yeah and <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly and he was, I have met yeah mo. And it's like it's so he was like ah oh, yeah the, the first conversations we had like oh you're freelancing like i was thinking about it like but i'm not sure blah he had everything you need and now he, yeah and now he's so successful as a yeah. freelancer. If he would have just started a, like a month or two earlier, you know? And it's like this mindset of like not feeling sure about yourself, but you can do it. You just need someone to push you to do it. And it's, I struggled to be like, oh, I want to get paid for that. Like I helped a couple yeah. of people to feel confident enough to go do it. Now he's making probably more money than I'm making, you yeah. know? Um, and it's like, and I'm not, Telling like it's not like I want money from him, from him because like I'm happy to teach that but at the same time like you say it's like you give people that value you invest the time and it's like I enjoy talking to Mo about like freelancing I, like this is also why I do this podcast like I yeah. don't need to get paid for this I really enjoy doing this and but, if anyone else gets value out of this this is great too but also yes eventually I would like to be paid for that you know like I would like to get some something back from that investment and what my coach told me and my mindset is not completely shifted but it's moving mm -hmm. it's like money is an exchange of value mm -hmm. so if you give something it's okay to get something back and yeah. that's the thing where i also notice that's the confidence thing that i have to learn that it's okay to ask for something in return yeah i, I completely agree and for me that is also like has been always a struggle of just like asking for the money mm. and I've observed you a lot and <laughs> of how you charge and you have like late payment fees I never considered that and oh, just gosh. yesterday I was thinking yeah next contract I, I do late payment yes, <laughs> fee because like you stick to your part of uh, the yeah. contract it's like I provide this service you pay me that that's mm. the agreement you've provided the service you've stuck to your agreement now it's their part and if they don't do it like what would happen if you wouldn't provide that service they would not pay you right yeah so when you provide the service they should pay you that's the agreement that's the exchange for money for value so and if it's delayed you miss out on money because like inflation this 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 that you could earn interest on the money in your bank account so yes definitely charge a late payment fee yeah but it's sure. good that you say that because i have this one client i worked with like two three years ago 
and it's now the client that I'm also um, having that subcontractor on. Yeah. And they're actually working directly with that subcontractor and just every now and then overlooking uh, her work. Um, but they're not paying me. So now I'm paying her from my own pocket first mm. because I don't want her payments to be late. Like, why should she struggle because the client isn't paying on time? So I dig out of my own pocket so I'm, and I've not charged them for the last late paid invoice. They paid it eventually, mm -hmm. but like three weeks late. Mm -hmm. And this one, they're again three weeks late. And no. now I'm going to be like, we have a good, uh, like I did not charge the late payment because of our relationship in the past. But look, now I'm responsible for someone else's. I'm, I'm going to, and it's 2%. It's not the end of the world, you know? How do you enforce it? Well, I'm just going to send a new invoice. And like, I, I sent, like, basically you, you chase them. You have to be like, oh, <gasps> the invoice due is, is due tomorrow. Can you confirm that you received the invoice? Is there anything you need from me? And they don't reply, you know? And then it's like, this. the invoice is due today. And like, there's are, there are some emails that and you can probably nowadays use ChatGPT for that, you know? <laughs> the amount of times I spent researching, like, how do you fi uh, like find a friendly reminder that's not too friendly, mm -hmm. and, you know? Um, but yeah, I have a few templates now for when someone pays the invoice late. But I only just started um, charging VAT for, like, and I now have to charge VAT, so I don't know how the late payment works with that. So I still need to figure it out. But it's actually good that we talk about this because I need to send them the like payment fee invoice. You should share the templates with your audience. Yeah. I think it would be a good uh, digital product. <laughs> yeah, maybe I do that. A free one to start yeah. with. Ah, I, let's do one dollar. Let's do like one dollar or something. I, I like to do on Gumroad where you just put pay whatever you want. Mm -hmm. I do think it's important to have some lead magnets just so like yes, it attracts true. people, new people. Yeah. Um, but see, that's where the mindset is so interesting because. Like for you, you, it seems like it's more worth it to have that lead. For me, it's like I spend so much time Googling this. And if it's just $1, and honestly, if you save yourself the time, but also like you can do it on ChatGPT probably. Yeah. So I guess it is the value, yeah. Um, but I, it's also like the value we perceive and the value mm -hmm. they perceive. Yes. So like if they feel like I can do this by myself, I would rather give it for free. You know? Yeah, but then also $1. Like it's not, that's it's less nothing. than a coffee. It's, yeah, yeah. I agree. If you're not, and I also feel like if you go freelance, I feel like I want to push people to get used to investing in themselves. That's a good and one. And if you know. really struggle with like, $1. is it worth it to? I'm not saying like, oh, like uh, spend all your money on like all these small digital products, yeah. but like this one template could save you three hours of browsing. Yeah. And like three hours of your time, how much is that worth? You're not gonna think about that one dollar. Yeah, you know? I agree investing I, I completely agree but I, I also think you should definitely charge more for your digital products thank you I appreciate that and I think I will um, it's just for me it's also a process of changing my mindset of just um, hiring my value and just being yeah giving me back something <laughs> because yeah. um, I think this goes like just from like my environment as I grew up of like I have no problem giving away stuff but accepting stuff always difficult and I don't know like why we grow up like this why like they teach us this way it's so stupid yeah. <laughs> I think why would we have difficulties accepting things but I do yeah this already gave me a like, confirmation of yes this is the value of this product people are already like this is my audience so I think it's also good to go for the audience that you want and with this I already see like okay these people will pay for yeah. the products even if I put a higher one out they will pay for it as well so my plan is just to do like three chapters of this, each of them 12 euros, if you buy them all together, 30 or 29 or something like that. Mm -hmm. That is my plan for this. And I will have like three different packages. Yeah, something yeah. like that. That is my long, long, long term plan. Mm -hmm. But I do hope in the next month to finish three products. So I'll be able to like comfortably release them and publish them. Yeah. Nice. Um, I could talk with you forever, that is completely but true. let's um, try and wrap this up. So thanks so much for joining today. Yes. I'm glad you took the time Thank and I'm glad so we could do this in person. 100%. Um, but before we end this conversation, there's a few questions I would like to ask mm -hmm. just to wrap things up. Um, I mean, it's tricky for you because you've never been in a perm job, but would you ever take on a permanent job? No. <laughs> do you think ever in life you would? So 
like I said, this year I had my first encounter with a permanent job, even though I, now like looking back, I feel it was more of a freelance contract than it was a permanent job in the way I was interacting. I set my own hours, mm -hmm. I set my own workload, like <laughs> literally it felt more like a freelance than anything else. The experience was not great. <laughs> um, the only benefit I see from a permanent job is the stability and safety of knowing okay each month i get this amount of money in my bank account that is the only thing i would consider a positive but since that did not happen with my job because they were a month late more than a month late mm -hmm. there was literally no benefit of me being in, like in a contract like that so i would say this as well we were talking if you have contracts 50 percent up front always always like no exceptions um yeah because i usually do that and with this it was like a contract you get paid this date of the month but okay i did not get paid <laughs> so i would say just maybe that kind of feeling of safety where you don't have to wonder if you're gonna have money or cash flow yeah. specifically but like we said with freelancing you can set that that up for yourself it just like you need to build it by yourself you need to do it by yourself so you can still have it so I would not be employed. <laughs> okay. If you could go back in time to when you were in Slovenia and you started your Kickstarter or you were just like feeling into this whole freelancing thing, what would you tell yourself? I would write down a list of resources and <laughs> links <laughs> and say, hey, read this, watch this, <laughs> learn this. Yeah, uh, I think it's a lot about knowledge and inexperience because with the kickstart, I had a lot of momentum. I had a lot of community. I had a lot of people going. And I was like, ah. <laughs> you know? I was like, yeah, maybe that thing, the other thing, you know? And if I continued with that direction, but also it was like extremely interesting for me. So naturally I just did something else. Mm -hmm. And if I wanted to focus on money and stability, I definitely could have gone for it. Uh, so yeah, more or less it would just be like, knowledge about business knowledge about finances knowledge about accounting knowledge about marketing i guess uh, sales um yeah these are just like overall skills necessary to run a business or freelancing and then you have your own personal skills which for me are video editing animation marketing as well content creation now ai mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and if your future self from let's say 10 years in the future mm. would be able to maybe who knows like ai you know maybe there's a way to have that um would come here today and tell you something what do you think they would tell you mm, i think two two things first would be you're doing great believe in yourself you have value uh, just the validation because I need that <laughs> and it like helps me a lot if like I get validation for what I'm doing that's why yesterday as well when also like a big newsletter like a thousand a hundred thousand people reposted something I wrote wow. so so I was like mm, yes this this is valuable something I wrote is valuable to someone with a hundred thousand people so that's why I'm, I'm also on a high because I feel like yeah I got validation for my work which is always amazing so that I would expect some validation because that's what I give others as well. So I just naturally think I would do it for myself <laughs> as well. Um, and secondly, again, the knowledge, just an, an updated library of <laughs> read this, learn this. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank this you. This was so nice. Um, if anyone who was listening would like to know more about you, where can they follow you, read about your stuff, sign up to your newsletter? Yeah. Um, Anywhere online, I use my name, which is N-A-J-C-S-U-S-E-C, -S -S -E Nate Sushets, which is difficult to <laughs> guess from my pronunciation. You can find me on any social media. You can also find me on my website, which is, again, my name, natesushets.art. You find the links there to my digital products, to my newsletter, to my other social media. Yeah, basically, if you Google my name, you will find it, which is the best way to go about things today, I think. Nice. Cool. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. This was yeah. very, very fun. I loved <laughs> the conversation as, as always. Likewise, likewise. Yeah.
This was a great conversation with Nate. I'm linking all the links he mentioned in the description of this podcast. Make sure to check out his LinkedIn and sign up to his newsletter. If you like this episode, also please leave a review. I only just started this podcast and supposedly leaving reviews will help this being suggested to other freelancers. If you're watching this on YouTube, please give it a thumbs up. Maybe subscribe. I'm talking about digital nomading, freelancing. Yeah, if you um, know anyone who could benefit from this episode, please also share it with them. I hope you leave a good rating and that's all for me for now. And I can't wait to have you again next week. Bye.